Remembering back to our previous episode, we were at the Snag Junction campground and ready to cross the border from Yukon Territory into Alaska. Well, we crossed the border, and the grandeur and unfathomable beauty of Alaska hits you full throttle. And, as we were about to find out over the next six weeks, it just works its way deep into the fabric of your being. Alaska is, quite simply, one of the most amazing and misunderstood places on planet Earth. Our route for the day would take us along the Alaska Highway to the town of Toke. From there, we'd head south on the Richardson Highway over the Metasta Mountains to the town of Slana, and then drive out the Nebesna Road, checking the area out and looking for a place to camp. Fortunately, most of the rain we had been in during the day had stopped and we had a pretty good view of the surroundings, though the clouds did obscure the higher summits in the distance. At the end of the Nebesna Road are two mines, the Rambler Mine and the Nebesna Mine. We weren't sure if we'd have time to explore the mines today, but we wanted to get down the road as far as possible. You never know, we might make it back to this place one day. You know that old expression, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes because it'll change? Well, I'm pretty sure that was written by an Alaskan. We have driven out the Nebesna Road. It's a 42 mile long road. We've come out about 40 miles and uh, did three stream crossings. Even today, look at that. Look at the scenery. Oh my God, it's just, look at that. So we've just been looking for campsites. We're not gonna camp out here because there's still a lot of rain happening up in the mountains. We had three stream crossings coming out. We want to make sure we can get back. The streams could rise a lot overnight. So we're going to go back and look for another campsite farther up the road. But we wanted, we just had to come out here because as we were driving, it just kept getting more beautiful and more beautiful and more beautiful. Man, this place is absolutely amazing. So we turned the rig around and drove out the road, and once we got far enough out, we started looking for a place to camp for the night. It's never a problem retracing your steps when you have scenery like this to look at. Well, after driving that dirt road, you can see how the Patriot and the Forerunner did. We're going to have some car washing to do when we get back to town. Meanwhile, we've made camp here for the night. It's beautiful. We're hoping that it will be uh, clearer in tomorrow morning so we can share with you the beautiful vistas here. So we're going to get some dinner ready to go, most likely have deli night in the camper, and enjoy the evening. See you tomorrow. The following morning, a quick stop at the beautiful and rustic Slana Post Office reminded us that we were still a long way from the big city. We're here at a, just really a roadside stop here off of Highway 1 in Alaska. I'm standing right on the shores of the Indian River. Today is Memorial Day 2023. 
You can see there's still plenty of snow on the ground and around here, and it's chilly. Still beautiful, great time to be here. It's before the crowds come up. All right, time to mount up. We'll see you back down the road. the Richardson Highway, drove through the town of Chitna, and picked up the McCarthy Road, a 60-mile-long dirt road that almost takes you to the town of McCarthy. The final mile you have to do on foot. Here at Adventure Beyond 60, we believe that you need to go as far out as you possibly can on any road before you start looking for a campsite. In the case of the 60 mile long McCarthy Road, that got us out there at about 8 o'clock at night, only to find that the camping was really just a parking lot. So we decided to turn around and head 30 miles back up the road to the next best possible camping we could find on the way in. We found a nice little hole out to camp in last night. There's a river right over here we could listen to. It was very pretty. And across the road, there is an old train trestle. So I'm standing underneath the trestle that was built in 1911 to bring ore out from the Canicott mine. This trestle was over 800 feet long and 90 feet high, and it was built in eight days. That's just remarkable. And some of it is still standing 112 years later. Yesterday, we drove from our camp on the Nebesna Road down the Richardson Highway and turned off and went out the McCarthy Road where we camped. And today, we are gonna head out the McCarthy Road back to the Richardson Highway and we were gonna hopefully camp in the Shugash Mountains before getting on to Valdez. But things didn't quite turn out the way we expected. We were hoping to get our first up-close visit to see a glacier, but this area of the Shugash Mountains wasn't ready to call it quits for winter, and in fact, the road was completely closed and snowed in. A highly rated campground that we were going to stay in, well, that wasn't open either. However, the drive down to Valdez turned out to be a nice consolation prize. Hey there, we are in Keystone Canyon, about 15, 20 miles outside of Valdez, Alaska. This has been an epic drive coming down through this canyon. Behind me is one of the highlights. This is Bridal Veil Falls. There have been other falls along the way. The whole drive has been amazing coming down from Thompson Pass. Not even a quarter mile down the road. We come to another waterfall. This is Horsetail Falls. And I can only imagine what the view would be if it wasn't cloudy and rainy and snowy. See the mountains above us. Absolutely incredible. We made it to Valdez, Ted. 
Yeah, we did, man. Yeah. This How place was drive was great. A little snowy it, but over Thompson Pass, but now I wish it was clear because there are just mountains all over the place here. It looks like we're in the dead of winter. Of course, this is Alaska. It'd be a lot worse than this. But, oh my God, this is so beautiful in here. Amazing. Hey there. We are in Valdez, Alaska right now. It's about 7.30 at night. And let me tell you, this place is amazing. The only way I can describe this place is Switzerland meets the ocean with the waterfalls of Kauai. It's lush and green like Kauai, a little colder, but everywhere you look, 360 degrees around, you have snow-covered mountains. You've got bald eagles and golden eagles just flying right by all the time right now. It's incredible, and if you like outdoor sports, whew, what a great spot. Kayaking out in Prince William Sound, river kayaking not too far away, hiking, rock climbing, and of course, mountaineering. And then plenty of winter sports to do here too. So it's, it's incredible. If you happen to come to Valdez and you wanna eat, I highly recommend the Fat Mermaid. The servings were outstanding and the food was delicious. Great spot to come. Very small little town, beautiful scenery. Come check out Valdez, I highly recommend it. Hey there, so we just got off the uh, ferry from Valdez to Whittier, Alaska. Whittier is kind of an interesting town because there's only one road in and out of here and one train track in and out of here, and they're shared by both. So you have to wait in line, train goes, cars go, train goes, cars go. We looked at the campground, it's completely snowed in right now. So we're gonna go through the tunnel and see what we can find on the other side. All right. And here we go into the Whittier Tunnel, right on top of the railroad tracks. So not only are we overlanding, we're spelunking. Oh, we still have a ways to go. We're not even halfway yet. Light at the end of the tunnel. Woohoo! 
That's it. We just came through the Whittier Tunnel after we had that fantastic ferry ride from Valdez over to Whittier. As soon as you pop out of the tunnel, you're presented with this view. What, I mean, look at this. We got icebergs floating out in the water, which are most likely from calving glaciers. And uh, I don't know the name of the glacier up there, but we got one coming down from the mountains. Right now, I think our only concern we have is the campground in Whittier was, was still completely covered with snow. And again, it's early in the season. There's another campground we were planning on up ahead on the road, but we don't know if it's gonna be snowed in or not. So we're gonna find out in a few minutes. See where we're staying tonight. If it's still frozen, we'll have to move on and find something else. Hey there, so we are at our campsite at Williwa Campground. Uh, just on the uh, Anchorage side of the Whittier Tunnel. So let's see what Deb's cooking up here. What's for dinner, Deb? We are going to have some more beef bean fajitas because they're really good and their ribs sticking. Let's see what you got going. So what's in them? We have onion, uh, sweet peppers, mushroom, and shredded carrot along with black beans, and I'll be adding the crumbled beef very soon. And then I add seasonings, which include cumin, salt, garlic powder, and chili powder. Yeah, gives it good flavor. Awesome. Yes, it does. These are very good. And cinnamon, just for a little. Yeah. Sweetness. Yeah. Good morning. Well, we're all packed up. We made coffee this morning. Uh, we didn't cook any breakfast. We decided that uh, we'd just pick up some food along the way. Uh, it's about 43 degrees and it's been drizzling and raining all night. Um, but today's a big day. Our friends are flying in from San Diego. We're all moving into an Airbnb for the weekend. And then on Monday, they're picking up two rigs from Alaska Overlander and we'll be heading out with them for two weeks. So sort of the end of uh, phase one of this trip for us and moving on to phase two. Really looking forward to this. It should be a lot of fun. It'll be great to have them along and share the journey with them for a few weeks. We can't wait. So I think we're gonna mount up and get out of here, go get some chow and we'll see you a little bit later. We made our way up the road to Anchorage and got settled into our cozy Airbnb for the weekend. Eventually our friends showed up and we made our way to one of Anchorage's most famous eateries. Hey, we're at Moose Tooth Pizza here in Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm telling you, this place is amazing. Right here, we have the Call of the Wild Pizza with venison sausage on it, amongst a lot of other things. And over, what did you guys get? Santa's helper. Santa's, Santa's helper. Santa's little helper. <laughs> Outstanding. The beer is phenomenal. What a spot. You got to come here and check it out someday. Great spot. That's right, Moses Tooth Pizza. The remainder of the weekend was spent cruising around Anchorage and getting supplies for the upcoming trip. With all the errands done and everything packed up, we hit the road and got out of Anchorage. Little did we know it, but we were about to embark on two weeks that were sure to change our lives. And we can't wait to bring you along with us next time, right here on Adventure Beyond 60.